welcome. I'm so glad you could come to our tea party. We're the Historian Committee from Girl Scouts of Northern Illinois. And my name is Sue. By watching this program, you're going to earn several badge requirements, but not earn the entire badges. You'll need to do the rest on your own at home. We'll send you a list. Juliet Lowe often hosted tea parties for her troops. They are very popular in Victorian times. Tea time was invented by a duchess named Anna in England. One day she decided she was rather hungry and she asked her lady's maid to have the cook make a pot of tea and some bread and jam and some butter. And she liked it so much she invited her friends. They liked it so much they made it a habit and did it in their own homes as well. Mm -hmm. When ladies visited each other in the afternoon, they took their own teacup in a pretty box. Before they knew it, people all over England were stopping in the middle of the afternoon to have tea. So some of the things that you need to have a tea are on this table. We've got teapots, different shapes, more of an Asian looking one, a small personal one, this is a more of a family size one, and this is one for a more elegant occasion. We have a saucer, that's a little plate with the ring in it, where the cup sits very nicely. And this is a smaller teacup called a demi-tasse teacup. Over here, we have a three-tier cake stand. And on the bottom, we've got small little sandwiches, including a lovely cucumber sandwich. On the middle plate, we've got some petty fours and scones. They're a biscuit that's a little bit sweet, but they're very popular. And on the top, we have some desserts here. So here we have strawberries and things and chocolate. Things to put on your scones would be clotted cream, which sounds terrible, but really it's good. Um, lemon curd and raspberry jam. Now a good hostess also considers people with special needs. So on this plate, we have food that we fit requirement. If you have a peanut allergy, gluten-free allergy, whatnot. And it's on a separate plate, so we can know. Now on to the tea. If you're familiar with the tea, tea bags like Lipton. Some of them are in squares. This one is in a pyramid shape. Many varieties of loose tea. You can see it's just these dry beans. Now, before they had tea bags, they had teaspoons. And what you would do, this opens up, and you put some tea in here, close it, and then you swish it around in your hot water, and that makes the tea. I would set it on a little plate here a little tea rest because it's kind of drippy. Other styles, here's a tea ball, another kind of tea ball, and this tea ball you can visit as you can tell. Now this one has its own little resting place. Here's your tea ball, opens up, you put the tea in, plug it in your tea, hot water, and then it drips right into the little saucer there. Okay, now once you have your tea with the hot water in it, the tea is prepared, you want to keep it warm so you can have something like this. This is called a tea cozy. It's kind of like a little quilt that you can put over your teapot and it keeps it warm. It's kind of a cute thing. Now one thing about these teapots is that they have a lip, a little pointy part on the lid. And you place that towards the handle so that when you pour it in your tea, the lid doesn't fall off. If you forget, it's kind of embarrassing. So, all right, there you have it. Next is Karen to talk about introductions and conversation starters. Hi, 
I'd like to tell you a little bit about the two types of T's that there are. There is a high T and there is a low T. The high T is one that is served from five until six o'clock. And it's usually for people that are hardworking. Served at those teas are meat pies, salmon, butters and jams. And it's for those people that need substance before they go to a dinner. Then there's the low tea. The low tea is served usually from three o'clock until four o'clock. And it's served with uh, little sandwiches and scones, petty fours and fruit. Those are usually served during the daytime when you just need a little something to tide you over. Restaurants and hotels will serve teas, and those teas are usually served from the hours of 12 until 4. Now, looking at this tower, what kind of tea are we going to have? Yes, you're right. Ours is a low tea. When you go to a tea party, you might not know quite a few of the guests. But that's okay, because one of the things that Girl Scouts does is makes new friends. So here we go with the conversation pieces. How do you get to know this person? You might ask them what their name is. Ask them what their troop is. What level are they? Um, do they like what type of season? Summer, winter, spring, or fall? What sport do they play? Or what sport do they like? Favorite book. What is your favorite book and why is that a favorite book of yours? A favorite color. Do you have one? What is your favorite number and why do you like that number? These are a few things that you're going to need the answers for so that you can make something in the near future. And Peggy is going to tell you what those things are for. My name is Peggy. I'm going to be making a name poem, home place cards. But first, I'm going to say a little history about the place cards. Place card is a piece of paper indicating what table a guest at an event, such as a tea party, weddings, family special dinner, or even birthday party is assigned a seat at the table. Place cards generally have the guest name and a table number and frequently have some designs as well to add style. At times, place cards will be suitable on your tea table. With place cards, you can relieve your guests from the guesswork of where to sit, give your event a friendly but dressy and prepare or feel, show your thoughtfulness as a host, choosing the best for your guest based on previous relationships, personalities, and possibly a new friendship. Place cards can go in any of the following locations on your table. On top of the napkin, set in the middle of the plate, on the table at the upper left of the place setting above the fork, lean against the stem of a water glass, on the table just above the middle of the plate in the place settings. Now that we have further understand about place cards, we're going to make one. As part of a badge requirements, we are to practice using kind words and manners. So what better way than describing a friend using the letters of your name? Some of the groups are not receptive toward dividing. If that is a problem, they can work with the group they came with. However, our goal is to make new friends and practice friendships. Now for this, Example, um, I'm going to use my name, but you can practice your kind words making place cards for your family. They will enjoy the feeling of your appreciation for them. Here is the example of one that I made from white computer paper. First fold it in half and then fold it again. Then I wrote Peggy on the computer paper vertically up and down so you can set it better when placed on the table. Using the letters from their name, think nice and kind things about your family members creating a name poem. This one here um, for Peggy, P is pleasant, E is for easygoing, 
G is for grateful, another G is graceful, and then Y is youthfulness. Your place cards can be simply made with your printer or with your own beautiful handwritten and some pretty paper. You can decorate it by using color cranes and markers with some butterflies, flowers, or whatever fits the party theme. Here I put some butterflies and flowers on it and you can place it here in front of the their place settings. Now, Here's Jan to talk about the fan usage of the Victorian times. Juliet Law was born on October 31st, 1860, during a time when the proper attire for a wealthy young woman included a hand fan. And we know Juliet Lowe grew up in a wealthy family in Georgia. She would have known the language of the fan. That sounds pretty funny to us. What do we mean by the language of the fan? Think of it as a way to communicate. Not anything like today when everyone knows how to text and Zoom and is familiar with what we might call the language of the computer. But let's get back to fans. The fan, like this one, was used to communicate very subtly. That means in a clever and crafty way. We'll demonstrate in that, that in just a little while. The history of the fan began in Egypt a long time ago when it was used as a symbol of wealth and royalty. The hand fan was seen as sacred and was used in religious rituals. From Egypt, the hand fan became popular in Greece, Rome, China, and Japan. The first foldable fan was invented in Japan, and it was modeled after the wing of a bat. Finally, the hand fan entered European culture in the 16th century. That's the 1500s. Think of that. That's almost 600 years ago. From the 1600s all the way through the 1800s, fans were a staple in fashion and communication among young men and women. In fact, a woman without her fan would be like a gentleman forgetting his sword. At first, fans were only used for the wealthy. Later on, they became a staple for people, uh, just about all kinds of people, regardless of class or status. Part of the reason for fans was to keep cool, no air conditioning back then, and even to keep the bugs away. So what about the language of the fan? As a woman, it was considered improper to outwardly express interest towards someone. Remember, we're talking about proper manners during the time of Juliet Lowe, when she was a young woman. Women had to be clever and crafty about it, and using hand fans allowed a woman to signal their emotions towards someone, usually a young man, in a socially acceptable way. No smartphones, no Snapchat, no TikTok, no Instagram, what we know today as our social media and how we communicate. The different signals became the language of the fan. Touching this fan held close against the left cheek with one finger meant, I wish to speak with you. We'll demonstrate, and remember, women were demure. That meant they were modest and reserved, often keeping their eyes downward and not looking directly at the young men. That was the proper manners, too. So, moving the fan across the eyes meant, I am so sorry. Opening the fan meant, wait for me. Covering the left ear with an open fan meant, do not tell our secret. Dropping the fan meant, we will be friends. Opening and closing the fan many times meant, you are so mean. And our final message with the fan, placed near the heart meant, you have won my heart. You can find lists of the language of the fan by searching online. There is also a list included in the Tea Party Kit that's available from Girl Scouts of Northern Illinois. It's also a fun project to try to make your own fan. Just by folding a piece of paper,
accordion style, starting at either side. When you're finished, it looks like what Peggy has. <laughs> Once the fan is an accordion, you can put it together on the bottom and staple it. And then um, you can use either white paper or some colored computer paper. And um, here are some ideas. I made a couple of fans. Here's a fan that I put a couple bows at the bottom of it. And then you can put some stickers along the top of the fan to make it a little more fancier. And then this one here, I added some roses to the fan to be more for a special occasion. Uh, you can use this one. You're, you could decorate your fans with your own ideas using flower bows and stickers. Next, we have Sue, who's going to talk to us about manners and how to set the table for a tea party. Well, hello. This is an example of what a table setting looks like for your tea party. You've got plates, cups and saucers, and spoons, and napkins. This is your saucer. It's the little plate with the circle in the middle, and your teacup fits right in there, so you know which look, what it looks like. You also get a cheat sheet, um, a diagram of how, how to set the table. We'll send that to you. Some of the things that we have on the table are the little sandwiches, really cute. We've got little desserts and some teddy bears. And here we've got the three tiered platter, um, cake tier. You've got scones, you saw sandwiches on the bottom, your scones and teddy bear here, and some little desserts and fruit on the top. So when you serve tea, the person that is serving the tea is called mother. I don't know why. So you've got your tea, and you ask your first guests how, which, how she would like her tea. And you pour the tea. And then as a guest, you should taste it and see if you like it. Some people put sugar and cream in their tea, some don't. If your guests would like sugar, you ask how many lumps, one lump or two. And these are sugar cubes. So you put the sugar in first. While the tea is still hot, it helps it dissolve. And you gently swish back and forth, front to back. You don't make a lot of noise. And then if you'd like cream, you've got cream or milk here. You can pour that in. And then again, you would stir. And then you take the teaspoon and put it behind the teacup, pointing the same direction as your candle. So when you have tea, you also can have scones and they're really nice little biscuits, kind of sweet. And you would put clotted cream on them, kind of like sour cream, a little bit thick, but it's a sweeter. And then you've got strawberry jam and lemon curd. Okay, your hostess has gone to a lot of time and trouble to have your tea party. So make sure that you return her reservation and let her know that you're coming and then arrive on time. Turn your phones off. It's not polite to have your phone on. No elbows on the table. That's not a good thing either. And napkins, they belong on your lap in case you spill anything. And if you do need to use a napkin, just kind of gently block. You don't have to wash your face. Serve your guests first. So the mother, she eats last. Um, Pinkies are down. You don't have your pinkies up in the air. That's not right. You see a picture of Princess Kate with her pinky down. Take small bites. No one wants to see what you're chewing and keep your mouth closed. Make sure you thank the hostess and write a thank you card. And Karen is next is going to talk to you about thank you cards. And I'm presenting today thank you notes. When you leave a party, the thing you need to do is you need to thank your host or hostess for letting you come. But also, once you leave and you get home, the thing you need to do is write a thank you note to that person. Let's talk a little bit of history about thank you notes. <clears throat> the Chinese 
and the Europe and the Egyptians were the first people who had, had thank you notes written on papyrus paper. This was notes to loved ones and friends, saying, thanking them or giving them a greeting. In 1400, the Europeans would write notes to their friends and then hand deliver them to them. In 1856, the Germans brought thank you notes to hear us in America, and the person that did that was Prang. Prang is also a company that still does greeting cards today. What is a thank you note for? Thank you note is for gratitude. Let that person know that they are being thanked for something that they've done well. Also, how about a gift? You've received a present. Wouldn't that person be really happy if you sent them a thank you note to say thank you for the present that you gave me? In your thank you note, also provide a little information like thank you for the doll that you gave me or thank you for the tea party I came to, instead of just the word thank you. Be more specific. Let's talk about people that you thank. There's different people that you can thank in your life. How about a teacher that has done a job well with uh, teaching you something? Or a leader who has made a meeting that you really liked? How about your parents who have raised you? How about a grandparent who has given you a present? All these people would like that feeling of gratitude in their lives, and you could provide it by sending that thank you note. Oh yes, and a thank you note is never ever too late. So you can provide a thank you note whenever. Just take that time, write it, and send it away. Here I've provided some thank you notes for you. A couple of Girl Scout things, and a couple few few that were bought. Here I've handmade a thank you note. But do they have to be this official? No, all you have to do, take a piece of typing paper, get some colorful markers and make a thank you to that person. Now I'd like to introduce Peggy who's going to teach a game to you. My name is Peggy. Now for some more fun, the tea bag drop game. Did you know this is a version of the old fashioned clothespin drop game? It was a popular game back in the 50s and 60s. Childhood games played at schools, even at birthday parties. The first clothespin were patented in 1853. They were made out of hardwood ash lumber in the United States. The game is played by dropping clothespins into a milk bottle. The player with the most clothespins in the bottle is the winner. In line with our tea party theme, instead of using clothespins, we are going to use a tea bag. Because a tea bag is larger than a clothespin, the player will drop the tea bag into a vase. If you are using a clothespin, you could substitute a two liter bottle or whatever else you may have at home for the milk bottle. Our version will also be played by kneeling on a chair which is backwards. This is so each player maintain the same boundaries during their turn. Whoever drops the most tea bags into the vase during their turn wins. Who can play for fun or choose a special reward, a gift for the winner. Here is Sue for the conclusion of the tea party. Well, thank you for coming to our tea party. Troops can check out some of this equipment um, from the Girl Scout office. Just call customer care and, and they'll help you locate it. Each service comes in a tub for 12 people. And the ingredients are here. Cups, saucers, couple teapots, plates, things like that. And also, there's a leader binder with lots of tips you can use. Remember to practice your manners, write thank you cards, and maybe you'll be invited back to another tea party. We're going to be sending you recipes, some cheat sheets, how to set the table, diagrams, language of the fan, etc. So you've got some of your badge requirements completed now. You still have to do a few more at home. Thank you again.
and enjoy your tea party with your family or two. Bye now.